Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 197. For this one, we're playing 510 at Bellagio. There are uh, some big all in, some interesting situations. You guys are gonna love it. But first, there's a new addition to uh, the back wall here, right in, right in this area. Uh, 2021 Vlogger of the Year Award. I, I just won at the Global Poker Awards, so very happy to win that. Thanks guys for uh, supporting me throughout the last five years. This has been a blast. I'll have the full um, acceptance speech at the very end of this, but uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and get started. We're on our way to Bellagio, where I've been having the most success over the last year and a half or so. I'm looking to extend that. It takes a little while before my name gets called for a new 510 game. I'm excited to play. We buy in for 1500, that's the max. The session begins a few minutes after 10 p.m. Early on, we're dealt jack-9 suited in the small blind. It's a straddle pot. The button raises to 60. I don't want to call and have someone 3-bet squeeze behind me. I take the aggressive route, announcing 3-bet to 240. <laughs> I accidentally put in 250, but not too big of a deal. This play should allow me to win the pot pretty often without even having to make a hand. Unfortunately, when the under-the-gun straddler was a baby, his parents were abducted by wild YouTubers. Since then, he's made it his personal mission to punish people who make videos and post them on the internet. He mentioned earlier that he saw some of my vlogs. Now he 4-bet jams to wreck my world and avenge his parents. The button folds. No decision for me. I fold. You'd think that the under-the-gun straddler would be happy to win over $300 without seeing a flop. Instead, he seems very angry that he didn't stack me. Yeah. I've been playing for less than a half hour, so saying, finally I beat you, doesn't make a ton of sense if you don't understand that he's clearly been seeking revenge for years. The straddler shows that he has pocket kings and had me crushed. King Kong, baby. That's better than that. <laughs> <laughs> the first significant hand of the day doesn't work out. Soon after, we're dealt 98 of diamonds under the gun plus one. I raised a 30, the button calls, the small blind calls, we're going three ways to the flop out of position, it comes ace jack nine with two clubs and one diamond. We've got bottom parents and backdoor draws. The small blind checks, I'd like to at least get to the turn and river as cheaply as possible. I check, the button bet 70. This is a fairly large sizing, it makes sense to go bigger since there's some draws out there and he has multiple opponents. The small blind folds, I don't like the idea of quitting and I don't like the idea of fighting a big bet from out of position, I put in the check raise to 300. I'm like a U-Haul company, I've got moves for days. My first one with the Jack-9 3-bet didn't work out. This one has a decent shot. Despite only having bottom pair at the moment, I'll have all the sets in my range, combinations of Ace-Jack, Ace-9 suited, and Jack-9 suited. Plus, I have good card removal, making it less likely that I'm up against a set of 9s, Ace-9 and Jack-9. My opponent should never have Aces, and in theory, should be mixing in 3-bets pre-flop with pocket Jacks, as well as pocket 9s. In real life, I don't see players on the button 3-bet very often over an early position raised with pocket 9s, but there's only one combo of that hand possible anyway, given that two of the 9s are accounted for. I expect to get this through a decent percentage of the time. This isn't one of those. Jesus, you guys always have it today or what? Nice hand, nice hand. Just like a U-Haul move, it doesn't go as planned, and I have less than I started with. These are the types of bluffs that have been working for me in previous sessions. Today, I've been getting crushed so far. I'm stuck 700, and I have to add on, at least it's still early in the session. The floor places me at another must move where I'm dealt 7 5 of clubs on the button. I raised to 30. I can't seem to get anything through. The big blind 3 bets to 120. If I were getting 3 bet by the small blind, I could reasonably call with plenty of suited connector combinations, even some 1 and 2 gappers. The big blind has less incentive to 3 bet me light since there's no one left to act behind him. He can call with a wide variety of hands because he's getting a good price and closing the action. With these things in mind, a 3-bet from the big blind should be taken more seriously, and as the initial preflop raiser, I need to be calling 3-bets with a narrower range. That's solid advice for you guys, but I always carry an imaginary 8-ball with me to help make decisions in these kind of spots. I ask it if I'm going to win this hand, and it answers with, of course bro. So I call for 90 more with a hand that I shouldn't ordinarily be going to battle with. We're heads up in position, the flop comes jack 9 4 with two clubs, we've got a flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. The big blind slows down and checks. Maybe he has air, or maybe he's like TI and just puts out trap after trap. I check to see a free card. The turn is another jack. The big blind checks once more. Now I think it's a lot less likely that I'll be up against a hand with much value. I've only got one more shot to hit a flush. If I don't, I doubt 7 high would be good. I bet 100 is a semi bluff. I'll have some strong hands like trip jacks that I play this way, and I may play 10s, 8s, and 9 8 this way as well. I mostly want to get rid of his air, but if he calls, I can still hit clubs. In that case, I'll be able to win a bigger pot. 
After 30 seconds, the opponent folds. Finally, something works out for us. This isn't even that large of a pot. Still, it feels nice to get the bluff through and a hand with more chips than we started with. We've got more work to do though. Here we've got pocket sixes under the gun plus one. I raised a 30. For the sole purpose of not making anything easy for me today, the hijack three bets to 140. This is the same opponent who cold four bet me at the previous must move table and showed me pocket kings. I call for 110 more in order to set mine and get some Bradley dollars back. We're heads up out of position. The flop comes 973 with two clubs. We don't hit the set, but we have some backdoor draws on a board that's not going to connect too well with the three betters range. I check with hopes of seeing this get checked back. Not today. The hijack bets 250. I briefly consider making another move since I'll have all the sets, and there's some good turn cards for me, but I think better of it and fold. The opponent shows Cowboys once more, then lets me know what his role in the vlog is going to be. Kings again? Jesus. I keep running into the top of people's ranges. I'm down 900 and haven't been in any good situations yet. That could change as we look down at Ace King suited in the hijack. I haven't been playing too long, but it's still my first premium holding of the day, and it came at a great time. I raised a 30. The cutoff, small blind, and big blind all call. We're going four ways to the flop. It comes king 7-3 with two clubs. We've got top top and a backdoor flush draw. This is the kind of hand that I was hoping for, where I've got something strong enough to bet multiple streets. Maybe I can take down a medium-sized pot and restore some confidence since it's currently wearing thin. Checks to me. I'm going for value. I bet 90. This is on the larger side. With some draws out there and multiple opponents, there's a decent chance for me to get called by worse. The cutoff folds. Small blind sticks with the theme of the session and puts in the check raise to 330. Wow. Nothing's coming easy for me. There really isn't that much out there. It's unlikely that he'd have a two pair combination. So he's basically only repping a set of sevens or threes. The big blind folds. I don't get the sense that I have the winner, but I feel like a complete idiot if I fold and it turns out the small blind is making this play with a draw of some sort, or perhaps a worse king. I have one of the strongest hands that I'll ever have. And I at least have a backdoor draw to the nuts. I call for 240 more. It's down to heads up. An ace king or heart would be great. The dealer puts out the six of spades instead. The action's on the small blind. He's got a question for me. Uh, let's see here. About a little over nine. My mind feels like it's getting scrambled right now. I seem to keep running into huge hands. The unfortunate thing is that this is the best hand that I've had. That doesn't matter. I could be drawing dead. I like to avoid that type of situation if possible. It doesn't seem like I'm getting bluffed. I make a disciplined fold, and we'll never know if it was correct or not because the opponent doesn't care about vlog viewers at all. That's him, and you win. Want to show up at the vlog or no? No. All right. I'll get you another round. Tried, tried. I get completely rejected by this guy. Well, at least at first. He got the tap on the shoulder to go to the main game. Since he's leaving anyway, he's more willing to share whether or not we made the right laydown. What'd you have there? Pocket seven. All right, so you had a set? Yes, sir. You got me, you got me. Getting wrecked right now. The fold saved me the rest of my stack. I have to add on for another 700. I'm in for 2,900 total, so I'm down 1,400, but I feel okay about it. It's really tough for me to make folds like that in the midst of a session that isn't going well. In the past, I've definitely called off and been even more tilted when I lose. It's a new year and maybe a new me. I somewhat feel like I'm free rolling from this point on. Here we've got ace king offsuit in the small blind. Under the gun raises to 30. A player in middle position puts in the three bet to 100. I want a cold call and potentially play a big three way pot out of position. I four bet to 400. This gives me the opportunity to win the pot without making a pair. If I get jammed on, I'll side call off. After some tanking, both players fold. We don't win a ton, but taking down this pot helps make my brain feel a little less scrambled. A half hour later, we get involved again, this time with ace four suited. We're in the cutoff, I raise to 30. The button calls, the big blind also calls, we're going three ways to the flop, it comes ace eight eight rainbow, not bad for us. The big blind checks, it's a multi-way pot and I'm probably way ahead or way behind. I don't think a bet of mine will get called by too many worse hands, so I check. The button doesn't want to let anyone see a free card. He bets 40. The big blind folds. I checked partially to give one of my opponents the opportunity to bluff. I'm not going to fold at this juncture. I call. It's down to heads up. The turn is the 10 of hearts. I check once more. Again, the button reaches for chips. He bets 130. I liked it better when he was betting 40. My kicker doesn't even play and if I hit a four, it's not going to help me since there are already two eights out there. I really only have a bluff catcher. Since I played this passively, I don't feel right giving up yet. 
I call to see how the river plays out. The dealer puts out the six of spades. I check. We're not going to get the showdown cheaply today. The button bet's 370. If he's doing this for value, I beat absolutely none of his hands. The main bluff that I can think of that he could have would be something like Queen Jack that turned a gutter and break the river. I'm not entirely sure he'd try to bluff multiple opponents on the flop with that either. He probably just has it like everyone else has against me today. I fold. This time, we really never find out if it was the correct decision or not. I'm getting tired of having to make laydowns. I'm not sure that I have any more folds left in me. In this one, we've got ace three suited in middle position. We're gonna play it. I raise the 30. The hijack calls. He's the one who beat me in the previous hand. The button calls. He's the guy who beat me with pocket kings twice this session and said that he was my nemesis. Nearly everyone at the table has the story of how they beat me today. Small blind also calls. We're going four ways to the flop. It's ace queen six rainbow. We've got top pair and a backdoor flush draw. The small blind checks. I check for pot control. The hijack bets 50. The button calls. Then the small blind calls. I consider giving up because it's pretty likely that at least one of the other three players has me in bad shape. Since it's not a huge bet and I can improve with a lot of cards on the turn, I stick around for one call. There's still four of us. The turn is the deuce of clubs. We pick up the flush draw. Small blind checks. I check. The hijack doesn't want to bet after getting three colors on the previous street. He checks. Seemingly out of nowhere, the button bets 210. It's a bit odd to me that he just called on the flop, but now that the deuce has come out, he feels confident enough in his hand to bet with three opponents who have shown interest already. Small blind calls, sweetening the pot odds for me. I can't go anywhere with a pair and a draw to the nuts. I call. There's a small chance that my pair by itself could be good. The hijack folds. It's down to three of us. The river is the nine of diamonds. It's disappointing because I was hoping that this was our chance to win a big pot and maybe even get unstuck. The small blind checks. I check. The button bet's 420. I really wanted to get the showdown for free one time, but nope. Small blind folds. This is another situation in which my hand has some value, but I'm only bluff catching. It's very similar to the previous hand, except there's even less of a chance of the opponent's bluffing here because multiple players called on the flop and turn. It's usually a bad idea to try and bluff on the river when that's the case. At this point in the session, it's hard for me to fathom people having it against me this often, yet we have no evidence to suggest otherwise. The fact that this player only called the flop bet, then bet the turn and river himself without much changing just seems really strange to me. The deuce on the turn shouldn't have improved many of his hands, and the well for me folding has completely dried up. I don't necessarily think that I've got the best hand, but I can't keep letting hands go, and you can hear it in my voice as I make my decision. The opponent has ace two soft suit. The turn indeed helped him out by giving him top and bottom pair. It makes sense given how the hand was played. This has been a brutal day for me. I can't get anything going at all. I'm stuck 2300 after making my first undisciplined call. I'm upset with myself for not getting away from it on the river. I get switched to the main game and add on for a thousand, where I pick up ace 10 offsuit in the small blind. It's a straddle pot. I just got to this table and I'm on my phone to start this hand, which is why the camera footage is a little late to the action. Let me catch you up. Typically, I would have raised from the small blind with this hand, but I didn't want to draw a lot of attention to myself getting off the phone and putting in a raise, so I actually call for 20. The big blind calls for 10 more. The under the gun straddler raises to 100. It's unlikely that he's going to have a better hand than I will. This appears to be a play to pick up my $20 and the big blinds. Because I initially underrepped my hand and I have good card removal, I 3 bet to 370. The big blind folds. Under the gun isn't having any of my shenanigans. He 4 bet jams and has me covered. After everything else that has gone on in the last two and a half hours, this is super frustrating. I've run into monster after monster. Maybe the under the gun player actually has something, or maybe he's just making a move on me since I played my hand somewhat strange by limp 3 betting. If I fold, I'll be down about 2700. If I call and win, I'll only be down around 800. I've got to be due for some luck, and if I call and happen to lose an additional 1200, that just feels like a drop in the bucket. I'm tired of folding, and I'm at the end of my rope. Okay. Fuck it, call. Go once. Brad's tired of it. <laughs> There's nothing I want less than a chopped pot. I want to either win this and get closer to the even mark, or lose so I can escape the session from hell. We're going one time for all of it. The flop comes a6-4 rainbow. We've got top pair, and are beating all the Broadway pocket pairs aside from the one combination of aces that's unaccounted for. I'm feeling good, at least until the opponent turns over ace-king off suit and has me completely destroyed. The turn is a jack. We've got three outs for the win. The river is another jack. 
The deck doesn't care if we're due. I lose a huge pot that I didn't have to, normally wouldn't have if I wasn't on tilt. Very good. Uh, nice time. The good news is that I've been put out of my misery. The bad news is that all these ships in front of me are going to a new home, and there will be no cash out clip in today's episode. I lost 3,900 over two and a half hours, short session, everybody had it against me. I was able to make some disciplined laydowns and then just completely unraveled at the end. Uh, called with Ace three, just after folding Ace King and Ace four, I just, I didn't have any more folds in me. And then limp three bet Ace 10 offsuit and called off the jam and uh, ran into Ace King. And uh, that, I mean, there's no way I was ever good, but I was pretty over it. And that's not good. You don't really want to be playing poker when you're in that mindset. So um, got wrecked and uh, I've had a lot of winning sessions, a lot of winning vlogs in a row. And sometimes things just don't go your way. And sometimes you can just get annihilated and I lost more than I needed to. But um, now I am going to grab a drink with my buddy over at Caesars. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Um, this session, I, I, I didn't play well. I ran out of patience, obviously, at the end there. And uh, I'm not immune to, to going on tilt or you know, making, making uh, bad plays once a handful of things don't really go my, well, my way. So this session, I clearly could have lost less. I don't think that I could have won. Uh, for, for a long time, I didn't really have too many sessions like this where I just kept running into big hands. I, for most of 2021, I was kind of on the right side of these situations where I had a lot of big hands. And, uh, you know, going forward, there's a couple other couple other sessions in the mix um, where uh, things don't go my way either. But, but there's some big wins in, in the next several videos too. So I have like eight in the pipeline. Um, I've got Mike Bailey now. He's my new editor. He did the last video and uh, he edited this one as well. So like I said before, still writing the scripts still uh, recording the voiceovers and putting my personality into it. Mike is coming in and uh, doing, doing uh, kind of the more, the more tedious stuff, but uh, and adding in some of his own stuff in the editing, which is really cool too. And my brother also, this is the first video that he's worked on. He's helping me on the audio and uh, it's just great to have two guys working on these videos with me, takes, out, takes off a lot of pressure and saves me a ton of time. So thanks to both of them. Um, there is a Lodge Spring Mayhem series coming up. I'll be out there March 2nd to March 8th. So uh, I know Andrew and Doug are gonna be out there as well. I hope to see you guys in Austin. That'd be great. That's the next event that's coming up. And then in the future, I've got some big news that uh, I'm gonna be sharing with you. So very excited to, uh, to be letting you guys know what that is in the future. All right. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time. And the winner is... It's Brad Owen. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for giving me this award. Um, the other vloggers, there's so many up and coming young studs that uh, I, I kind of figured this might be the, the last opportunity I had to win this one. Rampage, you're crushing it, man. And uh, you're gonna get one in the future, I'm sure. Uh, Jamin, he's hilarious. I wish he was here tonight. And um, Ryan DePaulo, he, he asked me to uh, bring some attention to video poker players who are a marginalized group in this community. <laughs> So, this is actually my second Global Poker Award. The first one was for Personality of the Year a few years ago, and uh, you know, I just people people here, my my girlfriend and my sister. Those are those are two different people, by the way, that are here. Um,
they can they can attest that uh, I've got virtually no personality, so I was kind of shocked to win that one. But uh, this one feels a little bit better. Uh, it was a wild year in 2021, and uh, just sharing the ups and downs. Thank you so much to the viewers who who have uh, supported me the last five years, and this award is really a culmination of that. Uh, one, one of the big highlights for me was working on this deal with, with um, the Lodge to, to become part owner of that, with Andrew Nimi, who's been my business partner and my friend for the last five years, and then Doug Polk also. Uh, and I, I've, I found that if you are business partners with Doug, he won't come after you as hard. So. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it's just cool to have this role and to be able to kind of create a safe place for vloggers to come out and create poker content. So uh, if you haven't been to Austin, go check that place out, and you're welcome to film. Um, Andrew and I had to deal with a lot of trouble with that, uh, even, even at Aria, uh, for, for a long time. But anyways, thank you guys so much. Uh, people in the poker industry, please... Please just give other vloggers more opportunities. You know, we're, we're doing so much to grow the poker community, and um, I, I feel like we're, we're an underutilized marketing tool. So thank you very much.